we are going to try and sell as many of these Porsche parts as we can. I do not think this is the best way you should do it, but it's what I'm gonna do. Before we get into today's video, I just wanted to say thank you. So last video we talked about that I had lost my job and this was really the thing that allowed me to kind of do some of these things like building cars. And um, I won't go into all the details, but uh, kind of left me in a spot and uh, I cannot believe the support that everybody's given. Just absolutely incredible that everybody would kind of open up, share comments and also share some donations. And that's, that's just incredible. I won't get uh, teary right now, but uh, just know that it touched me very deeply. One other thing I did based on a lot of comments is set up a Patreon account. Now, some of you might not know what that is. Um, a Patreon account is a place where people can go and essentially support you and in return they get kind of some special advantages like early access to videos, exclusive behind the scenes footage, things like that. This has been going on for a long time. It helps uh, artists and creators have more flexibility and help them to connect more deeply with some of their most loyal fans. So if you're interested in supporting this channel and getting some of those extra benefits, I will leave a link in the description below for my Patreon account. Before we get started, I wanna thank our sponsor, DroneQuote. DroneQuote puts you first. While others might obscure the facts, DroneQuote will actually tell you if solar is or is not right for you. They stand up for you and ensure that you're treated fairly. One of my favorites is their free calculators. So you can just go online and check them out, see if solar is right for you. DroneQuote. True fiduciaries for solar and roofing. Always in your corner. Check out their company and calculators. See the link in the description below. Figured I might as well check all the systems that I can think of. So um, I've attached one of the taillights, one of the headlights. I'm gonna check horn, windshield wipers. See what else I can remember. We're gonna attach the battery and see what systems work. Put in the key. Well, that's a problem considering I just got rid of my brake pedal. So it sounds like we've got stereo. It even looks like we've got air conditioning. Yeah, I mean, blower's working. I realize we don't have the compressor, the AC compressor. Looks like we've got power here. Let's try this. That's good. Windows. There it goes. This door locks work. Mirrors. Yes. Mirrors. Yep, mirrors work. All right, I forgot I had disassembled or taken off the wiper motor. So I've got it here and plugged it in. Just gonna check real quick, make sure it works. All right, so we'll go ahead and do the wiper. <gasps> Holy. Okay. <gasps> Holy. Right here, they've actually got a label. This is kind of a negative thing. So I've attached it to the negative side of the battery. We'll see if it works now. Still no. Hmm. All right, for the life of me, I cannot get the horn to work. That might just be uh, because the airbag's blown. I did take this out, put it back in. So again, maybe I missed a connection, but yeah, that one's not working either. That one and the windshield wiper, I can't get to work. No, there we go. So one of those lights works. Check the other one and blinker. So I forgot we still have our side markers and our front light. All right, so here's brights. Yeah. Okay, we'll go for blinker. Got blinkers too. Lights look good. I'll try turn signal. And there's lights up here. Let's see. 
So I think I have to have my foot on the brake maybe to make that go off. That's gonna be a problem. Let me go see if I can find the brake switch. I threw in the brake master cylinder here and because it had a connection. So we'll see if somehow that has anything to do with it. I plug the brake switch in. I'm not exactly sure how it works because I don't see a physical switch. Okay, so I can't get the park brake off. I have to figure out how to do that one. So if any of you guys have ideas on what uh, communication that park brake may need, uh, please put it in the comments. All right, the other one I'm worried about is the trunk latch because it is purely electronical. Is that a word, electronical? It's purely electric. So meaning if it closes and I can't get power to it or whatever, it will stay closed. There's not like a manual release, at least not that I know of. So I've kind of latched it with the screwdriver there and I'm gonna see if I can unlatch it with the lock. I just don't hear anything. Tell you what, um, I'm gonna grab the ECU, put that back in, see if that does anything. All right, I've thrown the ECU on, plugged it back in. We're gonna see if um, anything is happier. You know, there is a ground that I took off. Maybe it's the ground. All right, this time we... So interesting, the front one works, but not the back. So to me, that means we the switch works, but somehow the little drive up here, the electric motor isn't working. All right, so there's these connectors here that were disconnected because they come through a panel. So I had to take these apart. I'm guessing because those wires go up there, that is for the lock for the trunk. So I'm hopeful that that'll work. I don't think the park brake will work. Yay. So that one works, which is really good. So that one's in the lock up closed. So that one opens, which is good. The other thing I'm noticing is that light there. That means our brake switch is working. Let's see if So still no park brake. So I don't know German that well, but park bremse, that kind of sounds a lot like parking brake. So again, this one goes to here. And again, there's some wire bundles that go to this guy, but even when I plug it in, it doesn't seem to be happy. So if you guys have some other thoughts of what we can do to kind of get the park brake working, let me know. So my garage was kind of a complete mess from a lot of the Porsche teardown. I really, really wanted to reclaim my garage, but I also needed to kind of reclaim some money that I spent as well. Got, uh, I don't know, five or six different ratchet straps in different locations. Hope is it'll just kind of evenly carry the load. I've got a pallet here underneath, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise the lift up and move out my bench and put the pallet underneath and uh, see if we can get things settled on a pallet. All right, I believe we have success. Go ahead and take off all the uh, ratchet straps and fasten it more securely to the pallet. Okay, I got this one on the pallet. I'm really secure back here. Up here, there's just a lot of stuff on top that I'm not quite sure what I can wrap around and what I can't. So probably look a little harder here. I do want to show or just illustrate kind of the uh, difference. So this one, I believe it's like 320 horsepower and you just see all the belts, pulleys, 
just um, a lot going on the fuel rails and you come over here and this one is about 600 horsepower and you got kind of the two high voltage cables there's one other cable that kind of goes in and talks the inverter but uh, that's it I guess there's a coolant loop as well just interesting kind of to see the difference. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking this. Um, I do love combustion vehicles. Um, it's kind of, I think, the difference between, I'll say like an Apple Watch and a Rolex. So this is the Rolex, um, very complicated, very precise. The Tesla, that's like your Apple Watch. Again, it's just different, right? So it's, don't, don't get me wrong, whenever I talk about one or the other, I'm just uh, noting differences. I'm not uh, disparaging one or the other. As you can see, I just have no space. My entire garage is just covered with parts that I will not use and not planning to use. So my first thought was to go to eBay. So I listed a whole bunch of them and after about two or three weeks, nothing sold and I thought, I just can't, I, I'm not a warehouse. I've got to get rid of these. So I decided on a plan. My plan was to reach out to companies that sell Porsche parts. So I said, hey, I am taking a part lots of items, lots of components from a Porsche, would you like to buy all of them at a discount? I'm making a crate for all my Porsche parts. It's got to be sturdy enough to uh, withstand all the shipping. Several companies said, sure, let's do it. Um, they are low bids, but uh, kind of what I was expecting. And for me, I think it's just worth it to get my garage back. All right, I've got this one all strapped down. Just building the crate around the motor here to shrink wrap. Got the ratchet straps keeping it to the pallet. I'm just going to put some uh, sheathing on all sides. All right, motor is all crated up. Just going to put the top on just to document everything looks really good. Secured down with ratchet straps. Got everything shrink wrapped. Crate should be. Uh, Robust enough, I think, to survive the journey. Starting to pack the crate. I've wrapped everything. I think I've wrapped everything that I feel like is uh, scratch issues. So hopefully that'll kind of help with any abrasion. All these other pieces I think are probably fine. And again, uh, this is essentially eight by four by two. It needs to be that big to kind of fit the bumper and kind of fit the side skirts. All right, I wrapped everything in shrink wrap that I thought uh, that I thought surface abrasion might uh, devalue things. So obviously all the exterior panels and a few of the other things. I've got uh, three different mattress pads to try and cushion things and fill in all the places and help when things uh, settle or move not to uh, not to cause any damage. So hopefully this will work well. I'm gonna go ahead and put the side on and the top on, get it ready to ship. So this one is about ready. I just need to put the top on. I might wanna check contents one more time before I put the top on. Got everything pretty much wrapped up here. Uh, shrink wrap most everything, placed it in pretty carefully, added foam and just whatever sort of uh, packaging material I had. So I think this should be good. I'm gonna put the lid on. And then I think both crates will be ready. This one and that one's for the motor. All right, I finally have, let's get my garage back. That's awesome. One of the things I was able to do is sell all of my Porsche parts. So I actually, uh, I put lots of things on eBay. And, um, you can sell them for a lot of money. There's a lot of uh, Porsche parts that kind of have high value but I think there's a long waiting game and I really wanted my garage back. I reached out to about 10 different places and kind of had my own auction. I had lots of people bid and I went with the highest bid and I'll let you know what I got for it. Selling some of the Porsche parts, I was able to get $3,604. Now that also subtracted things like uh, the crating materials, things like that.
As you can see, we are big time in the negative. I was really hoping that this build, we could come close to breaking even. All right, so these are the numbers from the previous episode, along with the part sales from the Porsche. I'm gonna also update this with just what happened in the last video. Shirts or apparel, uh, we actually had 10 orders, so that was awesome. Amazon, we had 26 orders. YouTube, so this is uh, the revenue from that video as well as all the uh, donations. And I just cannot tell you thanks enough and just how special that really makes everything. It's just, it's amazing. I feel that much more support and that much more motivated by everything you guys have done and said. So thank you. Sponsors, we had a lot of people uh, also participate and order things. And so that one was also able to help there quite a bit. All right, everyone, that does it for this time. See you next time.